Welcome to this introductory series of training videos for SOLIDCAM. This video's topic is thread milling operation. So the thread milling operation will allow you to apply threads to a part, either in an external or an external uh, part of the of thread, uh, using a thread milling tool. So let's take a look at that in terms of the operation. So to get to that operation, you can go to SOLIDCAM operations and under 2.5D, you'll find the thread milling operation, or you can go to SOLIDCAM 2.5D, it has its own dedicated tab here, and you can go to thread milling. Uh, otherwise, you can just do it the old way where you right click, add milling operation, and thread milling. So let's open up this first one here that I have for the inside thread, and let's take a look at the workflow. So the workflow for the thread milling operation is the same as many other tool paths inside SOLIDCAM. We're gonna start with the geometry, so I'm going to define the tool that we want to use. I'm going to define the levels we'd like to travel in the Z direction. And then in the technology page, we'll see the main parameters of this operation. So in terms of geometry, the geometry you select for thread milling is exactly the same as that as you choose in the drilling toolpath in the same module. So for the details of this, uh, this one window here, I would refer you to the drilling operation window um, operation uh, video in this introductory series for the details. Um, but as a quick review, basically any circle, any complete circle on the part is what you can select. If I just choose the wall of this hole, it should give me the center at the top of that hole. And that's that one right there. Under tool, I can select my thread mill. Now in this case, I have actually added a solid tool to define my tool. So if I go into advanced view, we can see that this thread mill is actually defined using a 2D sketch. I've actually added the geometry there to do that. Uh, I could do the same with a 3D model, or I could just go with the parameter data. Take a look at tool number two here. Just using the 3D model, I can do that. And I can also do with uh, thread uh, um, the, um, the standard parameter data as well. For more details on to how to create a, uh, a milling tool, specifically thread milling tool, um, you can take a look at the creating milling tools video in this introductory series. Let me just exit out of here. We'll continue to use my tool there with my certain parameters that I've set. Under levels, this is where you tell it how far in Z it will travel. So in this case, I've chosen the center of that circle. But as a thread milling operation, it will generate a helical toolpath around that, that, that point. That point will be the center of my helix. Um, so in terms of milling levels, I can tell it to go from the top of the stock or the top of the target. In this case, I pulled the top of the target. Or I could just do it manually by highlighting that value and then clicking on the top face of where I want this toolpath to start. In terms of depth, there's actually two ways to define the depth. With a value, you're doing what you normally do with a 2.5D toolpath. I just tell it how far in Z I'd like to travel. In this case, I have chosen the bottom face of the part. That's why it's got that color coding there. That's about 60 millimeters. And then I've told it to go an additional 40, 4 millimeters from the bottom. So that's what the delta box is for. Now, I can define it by number of threads. And you can actually tell it how to do that with reference to the number of uh, teeth on your tool. So you tell it number of threads, it will calculate how far down to go in Z to achieve those numbers of threads based off the number of teeth on your tool. It's in technology where you're gonna see the main parameters of the thread milling toolpath. So in this case, uh, very similar controls to what we saw in the drilling operation, like I mentioned earlier. So under sorting, if I have many holes that I'm looking to thread mill, then I can sort those holes either in the order that I chose them in, in the default, I can do shortest distance between those holes. So if I have multiple holes, it'll just find the shortest distance among them. Uh, and advanced, if I go to advanced, it'll actually ask for what pattern I'd like to follow. So circular, linear patterns, whatever number I have there. And of course, I only have one, one hole here, so I'm just gonna do it as a default. If I like to add compensation to my tool, I can just check the box for compensation. Under thread data, from the thread table that I defined in my, um, my tool section, it should auto-populate here, but if not, this is where you can actually plug in the major and minor diameter of my, uh, my tool path here. So I've actually just made it simple, I just made it the same, but you can actually tell it the major my, minor diameter of the part uh, of the, of the uh, thread that you're about to machine, and I'm telling it that it's an internal. So I'm starting with the internal, that second tool path I have there is an external, so we can see how those differ, but essentially it is like it's simple. I'm doing an internal thread or an external thread, and I have the ability to do both with this one tool. We go down to direction. 
I'm doing an internal thread with a right-hand tool, this little graphic tells me that that will actually generate a conventional mill. If I set this to external with a right-hand tool, it tells me I'm doing climb milling. So basically, you have all three of these parameters here. So you can go from the top to the bottom or bottom to the top. However, whatever direction, whatever combination of these two you get, you'll see that you're doing climb milling or you'll see that you're doing an internal external with your left and right hand, however you want to look at it. Um, so you have the ability here to really dial in how you'd like to do this particular thread. And that leads us to how to actually rough it out if you need to rough it out. So the default is finish. I'm just telling it number of passes one. This is going to take one pass with my threading thread mill tool, and it's going to uh, apply that thread. Now, if I increase this from one to, let's say, two, I'm essentially adding a, uh, a semi-finish or, or a spring pass, whatever you want to call it. It'll just run through the toolpath once more. If I check the box for rough, I'm actually giving myself the ability to use the same tool to rough out the thread before I do the final finishing pass. If I check the box for single, it's really just asking for the finish allowance. This is essentially the uh, wall offset or the thread offset. I'm going to leave behind this much material, so I'll put my mouse back in there. I leave behind that much material to be removed by the finishing pass. And that's if I just want to do one rough pass and then a finish. If there's a lot of material there and my tool can handle it, I can take multiple passes with this one tool. And that breaks it up into a first step over and a minimal step over. The first step over is that first engagement with the material. This is either a really light cut or a heavy cut, whatever you're looking to do, but that distinguishes between that first cut and then the subsequent cuts. So it'll look at your major and minor diameter and it'll generate a step over. It'll, it'll generate passes using that step over. So in this case, if I put in, let's say, two thou step over and I only have six thou difference between the major and minor diameter, I will get three roughing passes before I get to that final finishing pass. So I have the ability here to really dial in, again, my roughing passes. If I know I want to take a certain amount of cut in the first one, and then just a couple of cuts after that before I get to the, to the finish allowance, I have the ability here to plug all that in. I'll turn that off for now. And then start angle. Start angle is actually generated by when you generate the tool pass. So let's take a look at this in the top view. So my start angle is actually at that degree right there. So um, I'm just starting my toolpath there with a couple of arc lead in and lead out. If I'd like to change the start angle, let's say I change it by 90 degrees. Let's save and calculate. You can see now that I'm starting at that position. So the start angle should be at a um, uh, one position. And then once you generate that, you can see where you like to change that start angle so that it starts somewhere else completely. Basically 180 from where it was. So. If you go to the link section, you have similar controls to what you would have if you were doing a profile operation. You really just have a lead in, lead out that you control. In this case, I'm using an arc lead in and an arc lead out. And I can tell it to flatten that as it gets to the bottom. So that's one difference between this and the profile toolpath. So rather than just doing a complete arc in with that same helical angle, I can actually just get flattened it at the bottom. So that is an internal, just as an example of how the external works we'll see that it actually works pretty much the same way. So I'll go in there, and I've got a different thread mill for the external. Different thread mill with different teeth. I'm still using the same geometry because those two threads are concentric, so I'm just going to use the same center point. I'm starting from the top of the stock. This time, I'm only going down to this first base here. And under technology, it is now an external. And it actually, I, I plugged in the values for the major and minor diameter, as you see there. And then from there, we get a toolpath that looks like that. So it's a very simple toolpath. The complexity of this toolpath is more in the actual tool definition. So you want to make sure that if you define just a simple parametric version of the tool, plug in your proper thread information so it'll generate the parameters for you. If you generate it from a solid model, make sure that you've defined this correctly. Uh, so that when you uh, when you use it, it, um, it 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 simulates the way you'd like. Now you don't necessarily have to have a solid tool. This will really just generate uh, more of a cosmetic um, solid verify. So if we just go into a quick solid verify here, if you really want to see the threads being generated, like you see on the inside there, then you can use a solid tool. Solid tool will give you that 
that thread representation there. You can actually see how that looks. Now, if you just use the parametric data, it will look like a block solid. So in the solid verify, it'll look like it, uh, it just kind of roughed out the face without adding any threads. That is purely inside the software. The actual tool obviously will have actual teeth. It'll actually generate the thread. So this is more of a cosmetic thing, but this can also give you an idea as to if the threads are cross-linking or if they start and stop in the right position. Uh, any information you're looking for, you can easily uh, plug it in and see that represented in the Solid Verify. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCamp, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.